the recipient of any landscape plan needs to be able to identify the species that are going to be associated with individual symbols. There are many ways to do it and different designers will all adopt quite different approaches. Labelling a symbol can be as simple as a piece of text here and a line and pointing to the symbol. Some designers will put a blob, a marker at the end of the line. Other designers will use a code, in this case for Thuya occidentalis. They might use the first four characters of well, the first two characters of the generic name, then the first two of the species name. Some designers will total them up. So in a zone such as this, they might draw several lines, maybe three, one up the top, one down the bottom and one there, and they'll say 6THOC. Other designers would use a leader. Um, that has the advantage that you can move a leader around and organize things, even if you bring it over to the other side, like so. The, and I'll unselect the leader, reorganizes itself. So a leader, when used to indicate particular symbols, the association between a symbol and a name is quite versatile. Some designers will just use the common name. In this case, emerald green arbora vitae is the common, or one of the commonly used names for that Thuya species. I'll just move it where it should be located. So some people will use that. Some people will do as has been done here, will indicate both the botanical name and the common name. So I hope you can see that for starters, quite a lot of variation in the way in which people indicate which symbol is associated with which particular landscape species. We've already looked at having a layout where we put images that belong to those various species um, on a page so that we can print them off at any stage. Well, most designers would produce some sort of plant schedule. Here's one example of a plant schedule. The symbol used to indicate a particular species, the botanical name of the species in this column, the common name, and then the total will be in some form of plant schedule. Plant schedules will vary a lot. Um, here's another example where this time the schedule's got a, a number in a, a red dot with a number in the middle and that red dot is then moved across to sit here. So if we look at uh, the red dot with the number two in the middle, it's uh, the Green Mountain Boxwood. And if we come over here and look at it and see there's the symbol in to indicate it. Botanical name and common name and a code that goes with these species are also in the schedules. Um, so that labelling then could be of the type we discussed earlier, where you're simply using a code to indicate a species. Further down, another two examples of different plant schedules. One, just botanical name, common name and code. So clearly you're indicating this plant schedule is just indicating and being used for totaling. This one just has the red blobs and the number and just the botanical name. And many more variations exist. But most people would want some sort of total. And when you've got a plant schedule with a total, you then want to write that information out to Excel so that you could total up the number of species being used. So in addition to labelling individual symbols with the botanical name or the common name or a combination of both or using a code, you will want to generate some sort of schedule which has got a count in it. In GK Plus, you can run that schedule in a number of ways and it counts the number of instances of the symbol automatically. And to do that, it's just GK Plus plant schedule. I'll just do the standard schedule and pick it. We first asked for the text height. I'll leave it at 0.7 and we put the corner point in. I'll zoom out a little and 
we just draw the schedule like so. So it automatically totals things up. If we then copy and reorganize our design, we simply run the schedule or update the schedule to get a new count. Update the plant schedule. To present it in layout space, I'll go to all planting and you can see here, here is the plant schedule tucked away in its own floating viewport. I'll highlight it now and that's provided providing uh, a window into one of the many plant schedules that I've generated here. I'll zoom extents. So plant labeling, plant schedules, very much the type and way you do it is up to you. But we've tried to play, tried to provide some software which gives you a lot of different opportunities to work in a way that meets your particular drafting standard. Tagging a particular symbol for the plant schedule is quite straightforward. If we go to GK plus plant schedules and lists, we can show symbols that have already been had names associated with them. So you can see this symbol through here, which is labeled uh, Miscanthus gracilimus, the maiden grass, is not yet associated. So I'll unselect all and I'll choose the option set data to a plant. So I can pick that one and we're after Miscanthus. So the little list that's associated with the drawing is in alphabetical order. So we should be able to scroll down and find the particular miscanthus we want and tag it. So it's just a matter of highlighting the record or the row and saying OK. Then there's a hydrangea quirkifolia here, so we can pick it. We can, If we want, we could make the column wider by simply dragging. So there it is. So we tag it and right click to finish. Now when we go show symbols with names you can see all of these have been tagged and uh, we're ready to redraw the plant schedule and get a new list to export that data assuming that i had done all of them to export the data we say extract schedules extract the plant schedule we've also got an option to extract a ground cover so if we pick extract plant schedule that will pop up this box a save as and it will save it as what's called a csv a comma separated file which will go straight into into excel so it's just a matter of giving it a name firing up excel and then opening the file and then you can manipulate the number of species that you brought out and the costs perhaps sending them to a nursery for a quote and updating your spreadsheet when the quotation returns. So managing plants, labeling, scheduling, exporting, costing is all part of the skill that a landscape CAD drafter needs to master. Hopefully this little series has helped just refresh in your mind the steps that you take in landscape CAD drafting.